Once you recognize that what's going on in any relationship is passive aggressive, you get better and better at seeing it earlier and earlier. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about three unlikely ways to shut down a passive aggressive conversation to indicate to the person that is being passive aggressive that this is a no go. So stay tuned and we'll get right on with that. Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackles, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a co-worker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways in healthy relationships. I'm so glad you're here. It's not unusual to meet somebody who is being passive aggressive. And sometimes that somebody is frequently passive aggressive and you need to be able to recognize it. So today I want to talk about these three unlikely ways that you can use to shut down passive aggressive conversations. And slowly those passive aggressive conversations should diminish and hopefully go away. I have a friend with a passive aggressive streak And in so many ways, she's a great friend and a colleague, and I love her. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, that savage streak. It strikes when least expected, and it makes my head spin for a moment before I recognize what's up. So if you have a relationship with someone, a friend, a parent, a partner maybe, whose weapon of choice is a passive-aggressive remark or behavior, you'll know just what I'm talking about. Their comment kind of hits you. And at first, it almost sounds logical, maybe even justified. But then you realize you're confused and strangely annoyed. And it all happened in a split second. Does that sound familiar at all? Now you think, There's something not right here. What is it? So stop for a moment. Recognize that feeling and take stock. The normal flow of the conversation would have you just responding to them, doing what you figure they want you to do, and you justify it by saying, ah, it's easier that way. But it's not, and there are better ways to handle the situation. So with passive aggressive people, don't complain about them. Instead, learn how to deal with the passive aggressive nature and with the passive aggressive conversations. And that way, you will stop enabling them. You will stop being part of that conversation. Enabling them is simply making it easier for them to keep doing what they're doing. You accommodate them or you appease them by doing what they want, and then you just become part of the problem that you hate. You're now not only playing the passive-aggressive game, you signed up for the team. You may need to read my book, Stop That's Crazy Making, How to Quit Playing the Passive-Aggressive Game. It's available on Amazon. Just Google my name. But the excuses and the reasons and justifications for passive-aggressive people, they're just underhanded ways to get you to do what they want you to do without really asking. Their attempts to get the upper hand, wield some power over you, and of course get off scot-free themselves, taking no responsibility for what they want, what they're unwilling to provide for you, or for their part, in the interaction. Does that sound familiar? Perhaps it's something as seemingly benign as this example. A couple's in bed and the man asks, who's going to get up and turn off the light? Well, it seems like an okay question, right? 
but it is rife with passive aggressive drippings. It's passive because he avoids asking his real question, are you going to turn off the light or will you turn off the light? Instead, he sets up his partner and he makes an offer hoping that his partner will in turn make an offer. So instead of being direct, he sets it up to make his partner offer to get up and turn off the darn light because he doesn't want to. And she often doesn't know why his comment makes her cross. It seems like such a petty thing anyway. So she thinks, why not do it? It's not worth arguing about. And she could be right. But when it happens all the time and she stops to think about it, how many times it happens in how many different scenarios, she feels frustrated, but she often hasn't taken the time to realize that it's a pattern and it's annoying and maddening and crazy making. It's not a petty thing. What it is, is an example of passive aggressive manipulation. If she accommodates it without being assertive, she's enabling the behavior. And that just ensures that it continues. But here's what you need to know about this behavior and how to deal with passive aggressive people. You may think these are kind of surprising, maybe a little, as I said, unlikely, but these are effective strategies. So number one, their behavior is sneaky, so you need to respond in kind and honest ways. Don't give back sneaky. Respond in kind, honest ways. What the passive-aggressive person says is not neutral. It's charged with underlying anger, often in the form of resentment or entitlement that he or she may not even recognize, know about, or admit to. That anger is often hidden in the way they deliver their words. Sometimes it's served up while the person looks you straight in your eye, defying you to make a fuss. Other times they arrive furtively, like throwaway remarks, offhand remarks, with the hope that you won't react negatively. But each is a misguided attempt to get you to do for them what they are unable or unwilling to do for themselves. Do you see that? That's why it's tricky to catch. When you do what they want, you get this horrible duped feeling. You can't quite bring yourself to say no, yet you feel like you've been had and often you can't even put your finger on why. It seems petty to make a fuss and get your feathers ruffled. You justify it in your own mind with things like, ah, oh, it won't kill me to do it, or they're not asking that much. Or, as I said earlier, why make a fuss? It's easier just to do it. And those moments of caving into their behavior become a pattern and you repeatedly engage in playing the passive-aggressive game. And you don't like it, so you need to stop it. Number two, it's about power. So keep it in balance. When living or working with passive-aggressive people, just their passivity alone can make you feel bad about being assertive with them, especially if you don't know better. And that's their ploy. They want to tip the power balance in their favor. They want to get you to do things or feel things or think things that allow them to feel like they made you do something. And at the same time, they want you to believe that you're doing so you had nothing to do with it at all. It's all on you. They got their way, yet they're not responsible. They really want you to believe that you doing what they wanted you to do has nothing to do with them at all. 
Kind of convoluted, isn't it? And at the same time, the conversation might sound like this. A passive-aggressive person says, Can you come home early tonight so we can spend some time together? And you say, Sure, I can do that. And the passive-aggressive person says, Great, I'll look forward to it. Home. Later. You came home early. You find yourself alone and upset. And it's nine o'clock at night. And there's no partner there. And then he or she finally arrives. And you say, trying to be reasonable and probably gritting your teeth as you say it, what happened to coming home early to spend time together tonight? And the passive-aggressive person says, ready for it, don't you realize that my job is important and I can't just get away when you want me to? Ooh, dripping, right? And you say, why did you say you would then? Passive-aggressive says, you are unreasonable. I don't think it's too much to ask to have a more understanding partner. See how the power shifted? First, they seem to share your desire to spend time together, so you think everything's great. And then the power shifts as the passive-aggressive behavior creates the emotional U-turn. In a New York second, it magically shifts from them not taking responsibility for agreeing to come home early to you, to you suddenly showing a lack of reason and understanding by even asking such a thing. That's what leaves you second guessing yourself and questioning your sanity. That's what makes your head spin. So number three. It takes two to be passive-aggressive, so stop playing. So back to the earlier example. Passive-aggressives asks, who's going to get up and turn off the light? And you respond, this is the good thing, I don't know. This is an honest answer that offers the possibility for the asker to respond with a more direct question or an assertive response. You see that? When the person says, who's going to get up and turn off the light? You wisely now, because you were listening to this podcast, you wisely say, I don't know. So when you know there's a passive aggressive pattern in your relationship, don't expect an assertive response because assertiveness and passive aggressiveness can't occupy the same space. You may not even get a more direct question, but it will show you something. You will have changed your behavior because you don't want to play the passive aggressive game. Another response to who's going to get up and turn off the light may be, I'm not. Or another might be, are you asking if I will turn off the light? This is when you start to demonstrate that you're not going to play the passive-aggressive game. It's important to remove yourself from that power-aggressive power or that passive-aggressive power game. And you do that by being assertive and by being clear in your response. Yeah, you may have to summon up some courage to start changing your responses, but... It will save your sanity and it will demonstrate to that passive aggressive person your unwillingness to keep on playing because these power games kill relationships and this sneaky behavior is dishonest. So I've given you three suggestions, three things to think about that may be not your go-to ones. First of all, remember their behavior is sneaky, so you respond in kind and honest ways. And number two, all of the passive-aggressive behavior is about power, so you have to keep it in balance. And then number three, and this may be the most important, 
It takes two to be passive aggressive. So you have to take the reins and stop playing. But always remember that it takes two to play the passive aggressive game. And when you quit playing, everything changes. These crazy making patterns will only stop if you stop. And you must stop enabling them and stop engaging with them in ways that leave you feeling as though you have been had. I hope that makes sense to you. It's really important to be able to catch this in the moment because people who are passive aggressive will try to get you to do what they want you to do by default. They will do that. And they are very good at it often. And they practice so much. That's what makes them good. So you have to practice these three things. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. You can always find me here on the Save Your Sanity podcast or at my other podcast, Transforming Relationship with Emotional Savvy. Or find me on YouTube. My channel is called For Relationship Help. F-O-R Relationship H-E-L-P. So much there for you, and I hope you will take advantage of it. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe, and then you will always know what's new for you. Take good care and talk soon. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want, and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at 4relationshiphelp.com, F-O-R, Relationship, H-E-L-P.com, or visit me on YouTube at 4 Relationship Help. Join me for next week's show.